Hello there, and welcome to another episode of Barely Contained, the podcast which takes a walk through what passes for showbiz journalism in the end of days brought about by the information superhighway. I'm Matt Withers, and as ever, joining me to waste another 15 minutes of his short time on this planet is Chris Beckett. Hello. Right, we're going to start with a story which I think is from the Daily Star online, although as we've uh, ascertained so often on this podcast, it doesn't really make any difference. Um, We are in a a time of a new tsunami, Brexit, Trump, North Korea. But I I admire the journalist that's going to chase the lesser known story. So this headline caught my eye. Demi Rose Morby turns Boobzilla in major, (laughs) major in caps, cleavage overspill. Wow. (laughs) Right, it starts. Our nights out usually involve running to the venue and plotting ourselves at the bar for the whole night. Right, (laughs) right. I think I'm going to have to stop you right there. (laughs) Our nights out. Okay, bring the reader in. Break the fourth wall. (laughs) Indeed. Running to the venue. Yep. I've never run to a venue in a night out in my in my life. Not since my student days, if you were trying to get there before the uh, 50p Iron Brew and Vodka deal finished. Well, I'm not sure that's the kind of uh, establishment that Demi Rose Morby's going for. Well, I mean, you say that. I don't know who she is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to give her the benefit of the doubt. Plotting herself, plotting ourselves at the bar. Plotting ourselves at the bar? Is there some sort of, like, Blofeld-style... <laughs> Yeah, and also, I mean, I don't want to drill down too much in this. Uh, to plot can be a, a, an intransitive or transitive verb, but you don't need ourselves in there. You could just be plotting at the bar, but we don't want to dwell on that. Anyway, but Demi Rose Morby manages to cram in one extra step into her nights on the town. The boob-filled stroll. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that well-known thing. Tiger's ex Demi Rose, and this is the point in which they assume you know who Tiger <laughs> is. I, I have no idea. Tiger with an A, so it's not Tiger Woods or Tony the Tiger, um, decided to titillate while attending the Nasty Gal UK launch in a tighter than tight black frock. Okay. <sighs> Here we go. Bit of drama. But Demi suffered a Boob explosion of catastrophic proportions as she made her way to the venue. The 22-year-old hit the streets of London and she immediately turned it into a flesh-flashing parade. No, she didn't. No, she didn't, because it was a parade of one, which makes it an even more shit parade than last year's <laughs> Led Some For Leader march on Westminster. Oh, dear. Wearing a skin-tight black dress, we've done this bit, Demi's insta-famous curve, insta-famous curves were put on full display. I quite like that bit. Insta-famous, yeah, yeah, okay, we'll have that. But Demi's hourglass shape was over... <laughs> was overwhelmed by her mega assets, which were bursting from her scooped neckline. I don't think they've mentioned enough the fact that this young woman has breasts. <laughs> also, she's overwhelmed. So it, it makes sound like the Elephant Man or a basketball player I saw turning out for Cheshire Phoenix last year who was seven foot eight and have to sleep in a special bed. It's, it's making it sound that it's like a wonder of the world as well, like <laughs> yeah. sort of some sort of bat catastrophe <laughs> or something. Roll up. Appearing to go braless... They're labouring this now. The brummy beauty allowed her bulging boobs to take focus. Well, that's good, because we haven't really had a focus for this piece as yet. <laughs> Demi kept the rest of an, her ensemble simple and sported sleek tresses and a red lip. One, one <laughs> just, just singular, just the one just red the lip. One. She doesn't need to mess with anything else. <laughs> she just, just well, she can look like one of those... Um, Gurning plastic puppets that you used to get in Blackpool Promenade. Well, she's got to keep all the attention up top, right? I think that's the, that's exactly the point. <laughs> it doesn't matter. There's only one thing this article is going to talk about. And when inside the party, Demi worked her most <laughs> treasured assets and did little to keep them under wraps. Since Demi was first spotted with Kylie Jenner's ex-boyfriend Tiger, so uh, okay. I'm vaguely aware of, yeah. of at least what kind of sphere they, they, they exist in, in May 2016, her success has only trebled. Trebled? That's a bit random. <laughs> not specific. doubled, not quintupled. 
The brunette was already a social media superstar in her own right. Of course, of course, <laughs> of course she, she was. Of course, of she, course was. she is. But Demi Rose's Instagram blew up, and she now boasts 5.6 million followers, which, fair enough, that is quite a lot. I'm just... Uh, I just feel sorry that Roland Rat missed this whole Instagram <laughs> kind of wave. Despite Demi Rose and Tiger never making things official, Demi managed to carve out a successful career for herself and the added attention. This summer... The voluptuous model even turned DJ, even turned <laughs> DJ, and headed to Ibiza to hone her craft. She can do something else. <laughs> right, Chris, you have turned your eye to the Daily Mirror uh, online, and uh, they've been looking at a mystery that has been uh, confusing some fans of Coronation Street. Yeah, well, I go for a bit more of the, you know, the... As you said, the mysterious route. I'm not drawn by the superficial. And this one, one to debunk. Coronation Street viewers notice something very strange about Todd Grimshaw and Billy Mayhew's bed. Eagle-eyed fans are always quick to spot when something's not quite right. And during a bed scene last night, they noticed something bizarre about the couple's sleeping arrangements. Can I have a guess? Go on then. Is it haunted? Mm, no. Is it made of marshmallow? No. Is it adorned with a picture right across the front of the former Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Danny Alexander? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you're close. (laughs) You're so close. Right. Curry fans have always been good at noticing the odd and inconsistent, and their latest spot is no exception. During Monday night's episodes, viewers were stumped during a bed scene between couple Todd Grimshaw and Billy Mayhew because their shared bed was absolutely tiny. The pair's bedroom is rarely shown on screen, and now it appears the reason behind it. Yeah. There's missing some words there. There are some words missing, <laughs> and, and, and indeed a story. <laughs> Fans took exception to their sleeping arrangements and flocked to Twitter to air their confusion. This is going to be good, isn't it? There's going to be some really <sighs> incisive comments here, just here from previous podcasts. Todd and Billy could do with investing in a bigger bed. Hashtag Corey, wrote one. Yeah. Well, another echoed the sentiment and said, that bed Todd and Billy are in is tiny. Hashtag Corrie. A third super fan found the moment <laughs> sad and said, so much space between my guys in such a tiny bed. Also, is that how Billy normally tries to sleep? Looks very uncomfortable. Hashtag Todd. Hashtag Corrie. Yeah, the super fan, indeed. Well, another astute fan added... Cory, the bed looks too small for two grown men. And why do dramas always unfold because of a passing jogger? Hashtag non sequitur. <laughs> I like the way they describe him as astute. <laughs> yeah. A real cultural critic we wheeled out here. A fifth fan joked, Todd and Billy should invest in a new bed. Though given recent events, a single bed would be enough. Hashtag Cory. Hashtag Coronation Street. Yeah. I think they're alluding to a plot point there, but I don't think we should go into that. No, I mean, I've never seen it. Yeah. (laughs) Right, Um. I've got a story about former health lottery presenter, (laughs) Anthea Turner. This, I think, was in the Express Online, and it's headlined, Anthea Turner mercilessly trolled after epic, in caps, online blunder. Getting married again. So, we've got an epic online blunder here. We don't, you know, don't know from that headline if it's a leaked cache of documents or a breach of data protection rules or a rude picture. This could be uh, WikiLeaks all over again. Very much so. Anthea Turner calls a stir for all the wrong reasons this week, becoming the butt of jokes online. The television presenter was relentlessly mocked after making a major mistake on Twitter which was soon spotted by her 25,000 followers. Were they eagle-eyed followers, <laughs> <per> chance? <laughs> it doesn't say, but... Um, yeah, I think they were, actually. I think it does say that for everyone. <laughs> it's um, bound to, anyway, let's be honest. It's a major mistake. Um, there was a story earlier today about um, an Australian politician who'd been liking uh, filthy, filthy tweets on uh, Twitter. Oh, yeah. N- not quite on that level. Uh, the 57-year-old's problem started when she tried to cancel a recent order but forgot to include the name of the company or product. Rookie. 
Anthea was soon inundated with hilarious replies from people guessing what she had bought. Do we think these are going to be hilarious? Well, I think they should definitely have put <laughs> quote marks around hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's very much um, subjective here as to whether these are hilarious or, 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 or not. Uh, with sex toys, Cadbury mm. snowflakes, mm. and intimate female hygiene products suggested. Mm. So Really hilarious. I would say tawdry. Yeah. <laughs> I would say tawdry. I mean, replies. at least the snowflakes has got a kind of point. Yes, which, 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 which we come to. Um, I am trying to cancel my order made yesterday. Can you help? Order number 78259, the former Blue Peter star had begun. Just checking, Matt, can we legally, can we say what order number it is? Should we <laughs> yeah. have redacted that? Yeah, maybe maybe well, when, when we come to edit that, we better bleep that out. Uh, otherwise, we've got a major uh, major error of our You don't own. want to upset Turner. No, well. She'll fucking have you. Yeah, well, we don't want to go there. Also, you, you've just made sure that we have to click the... Uh, <laughs> The box on iTunes to show that this was explicit. Oh. Eagle-eyed fans then started <laughs> suggesting things she had regretted purchasing, with one user tweeting, Are you sure? You seem so certain about the corn plasters and the bunion pads are top quality. I was going for the feet. Sorry, Anthea. Orders made in the Lancashire Hot Pot Shop are legally binding, joked one. Those 100 copies of Never Mind the Hot Pots are yours, cough up. Um, I like the way you read that, just to really like take out any kind yeah. of humour. Uh, i just skip, skip a bit here. Uh, some people suggested Anthea had ordered snowflake bars, poking fun at the bad publicity she and her ex Grant Bowby received when wedding pictures showed them eating the chocolate. 100 bars of at Cadbury UK snowflake bars. Are you getting married again to someone else? Anthea later explained that she'd been trying to cancel an order for some festive lights and said that she could see the funny side of her gaff. What a joker. I know you're laughing. So am I. Replies are hilarious, she said, almost certainly through gritted teeth. They were Christmas lights, she tweeted. Thank you for all pointing out my mistake. Yeah, that's exactly the sort of (laughs) comment you would say when you're very annoyed. Well, moving on from one legend of the 1980s, I have uh, another. From him to her, chuckle brother Paul flirts with Caroline Flack after she posts topless pool pic. Oh, yeah. Okay, this this sounds um, slightly more promising. Well, (laughs) you know, it's it's setting a high bar with a headline. Paul Chuckle embarked on a flirtatious exchange with TV presenter Caroline Flack after she posted a picture of herself topless in a swimming pool. Paul Chuckle still hasn't lost his sense of humour after shamelessly flirting with Caroline Flack on Twitter. I don't know why they're suggesting that he might have lost his sense of humour. Has he been like... No. There's there's a major tragedy that's affected him or perhaps Barry. He still hasn't lost his sense of humour. I mean, Mm. yeah, there's no reason why, why he would have done yeah, slightly uh, sinister overtones there. Anyway, we'll carry on. The Chuckle Brothers star got into an amusing exchange earlier after she posted a topless pool picture while on holiday in Los Angeles. There's actually a kernel of truth in her description there because, I mean, this, it's it's slightly amusing, isn't it? It's not hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like the, the, the response is to Amphi Chen. It's slightly amusing. Caroline captioned her photo, Wish you were here. Paul then responded... Planned on it, but work got in the way. Caroline saw a pause reply and said, To me or to you? See a little call back there to the Chuckle Brothers famous catchphrase. I, I think I think we've got that. Paul retorted, To LA, eh? Paul's followers were in hysterics over the message. Yeah, of course they were. They really are easily amused. <laughs> One wrote, What an icon. Another messaged, True hero. Another fan joked, Paul Chuckle putting it about. One lady was less than impressed, writing, Paul, what the heck? That was all in caps as well. That was, that was Missy's chuckle. Sh- shouting at him. Paul, oh, get off the internet. <laughs> Caroline is in LA to try to crack the US market and land herself apart in a sitcom. Yeah, the, the interesting aside about the Chuckle Brothers, uh, they live together with their respected wives. Really? Yeah, the four of them live together just uh, in a little village just outside Rotherham. 
And um, I think it was Paul who once did a, a piece with The Guardian, which was a, a day off in the life of. And essentially, a day off in the life of Paul Chuckle is watch TV all day until it's about six o'clock when it's time to start drinking. You I can... think that is, I mean, <laughs> listeners, hashtag added value right yeah. there. Yeah, that's it. This, you get a little bit extra on the podcast this week. <laughs> That music means it is time for The Life of Riley. It's a bit of the podcast where we have a look at the increasingly tedious reports about the Countdown uh, co-presenter Rachel Riley and what she's been up to this week. And the headline, which I think is from the Star Online, is Rachel Riley gives hint of cleavage in plunging top. Um, Very much what is known in the profession as a one-fact story. Yeah. It's all, again, a little tawdry, but we'll, 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 we'll just get out of the way, shall we? Um, Rachel Riley brought her own tea time teaser to Countdown today. OK. Rachel Riley dressed down today wearing a comfortable jeans and top combination rather than a glamorous frock. Now, this is what gets me. Like, so many of these bloody Rachel Riley stories are like, oh, look at her, look what she was wearing, look the way she turned suggestively to do her job by, like, you know, putting some numbers on the numbers board. This, they're actually saying that she's dressing down, she's not wearing anything, but guess what? They're going to start objecting her and make it all really pervy. Yep, the 31-year-old often slips into a skin-tight mini dress or a loose summer dress, but today she showed a different side to her style. Rachel wore a monochromatic ensemble uh, consisting of black jeans and a lacy black and white blouse. Monochromatic ensemble. Yeah. That's just classic Daily Star journalism <laughs> right there. It really is. The one we use in mono, monochromatic. The top featured a plunging neckline with the buttons ending at the mathematician's bust. Oddly enough, I had a couple of pints in the mathematician's bust on the way here. <laughs> Great pub. <laughs> The beauty gave a hint of cleavage in the outfit, making her a walking, talking tea time teaser. That's, uh, you know, Cliff Richard needs to be uh, made aware (laughs) of this sort of use of uh, walking, talking, anything. She's also, uh, so far on this, both brought a tea time teaser and is a tea time teaser, which is uh, very much a, a philosophical conundrum. Well, they haven't called her a living doll just yet, but basically every article pretty much implies that she is. Earlier this month, Countdown celebrated its 35th birthday, which also coincided with the launch of Channel 4. Now, that is just appalling. Countdown was actually the first programme aired on Channel 4. They could have said that. They didn't. They made it out that it was just some bizarre coincidence (laughs) that a programme that appears on Channel 4 coincides with the launch of Channel 4. It is a very odd coincidence that both exactly 35 years old. That's a shit. Hey, this is good. You're determined that we're going to have to tick this iTunes box, aren't you? During the landmark episode, Rachel dropped a major secret about the filming of Countdown. Mm Mm-hmm. Host Nick Hewer said he wondered if there had been anything in the world that had stayed the same in the 35 years that Channel 4 had been on air. Rachel joked that there definitely had been, saying, I think our warm-up guy's joke stayed the same since 1982. Mm. That means the studio audience gets a bit more entertainment than the nail-biting war of words and numbers between contestants. They get that quiet, haven't they? Pop- <laughs> popular entertainment show filmed before a live studio audience has warm-up acts. That's a bit of an exclusive That's there. A major secret. Mm, buried that quite far down the story. Taking to Twitter on the same day, Rachel wished the channel a happy birthday with lots of naked chap man cage. Mm. Of course, that was an anagram for champagne and cake. But how else would you expect a birthday message from the Queen of Countdown? Well, actually, not to like nitpick, but her speciality is the numbers round. So really, she wouldn't have been doing an anagram. She should have been doing some, you know, clever quadratic equation. Yes. Yeah. Something kind of uh, via via the medium of Morse code. Rachel's predecessor, Carol Vorderman, went on to appear on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Tenuous. 
Could Rachel be swapping the UK for the Australian jungle anytime soon? No. Nope. Uh, very much from the same site, who regular uh, listeners to podcasts will know a couple of episodes ago, uh, faithfully reported that Meghan Markle was going into the jungle. <laughs> well, I, for one, am awaiting the Suits starlet and future <laughs> royal. To, to jump in and form an unlikely friendship with former Chelsea hard man Dennis Wise. <laughs> what a great midfield combo they will make. <laughs> uh, countdown airs weekdays at 2.10pm on Channel 4. Uh, and that's it. You'll be, no doubt, incredibly gratified to learn. Uh, listener, we'll be back in, you know, a week and a half, two weeks. Who yeah. knows? We seem to have very much swerved away from the regular date. Don't miss us on Twitter at barely underscore pod. And uh, see you next time. Yep. Bye. Bye.